This is Tom Bain. And this is Wine, Money, and Song. If you find the content of this channel of interest, please subscribe. And if you have like-minded friends who are interested in wine, please tell them about it. And in comments, please let us know what subjects you would like us to cover and if there's wines you want us to react to. So this is episode two about Bordeaux. Uh, we did the right bank as the first episode and part two, obviously we're gonna do the left bank. And um, the left bank was classified in 1855 with that famous five growths of uh, of uh, Bordeaux were classified. And the reason why the government did that is because they wanted to bring some sort of uh, reason uh, to the pricing of wines from Bordeaux and they classified the wines so that they could be price, uh, priced accordingly. The first gross would get the top amount, second gross would get a certain amount less and so on and so forth. So 1855, Remember, and that's a big difference between the right bank being classified uh, uh, 75 years later and even longer than that with the, uh, uh, with the San Emilions. These were the wines that people got to know uh, were uh, great Bordeaux wines. So we start, we start with Santa Staff, which is the most northern of all of the left bank wines. And Senna Staff uh, is known to have the most sturdiest and tannic and full-bodied wines uh, of all of Bordeaux. And um, the wines are that way because the left bank uses mainly Cabernet Sauvignon and they blend in some Merlot and a little Cab Franc, some Petit Verdot and maybe some Malbec. But generally uh, two thirds, 70%, even more is Cabernet Sauvignon. And they use the Merlot to soften it up. Uh, but uh, that's why the wines are more powerful than right bank wines. So in Bordeaux, when I first visited Bordeaux, I was shocked to see how flat the lamb was and how boring it was, to be honest. Not scenic at all. It was just farms and vines uh, until I got to San Emilion, uh, which was more beautiful and eye-opening. But uh, you can see Bordeaux itself is an industrial town. It's a big town and there's a lot of industry in Bordeaux and the vineyards are around the town of Bordeaux. So to, to the north is Santa Staff. And uh, there's a lot of gravel and limestone, but in the northern part, there's some clay. So Senestaf has it, uh, and those wines age well. And the wines of Senestaf, the most famous, and I think for the longest time, Montrose has held that. And the wines are incredible. I remember uh, trying the 70, uh, at a, at a three-star restaurant that was incredible. And I buy, year after year, I buy it in great vintages. And the second wine is Casa Estonel, uh, which is a different style. It's not as big, uh, not as, uh, not as uh, round as uh, Montrose is, uh, but it's come into fashion the last 15 or 20 years. And, uh, they used to make a more elegant ballot style, but now they're making a bigger style. But the 2016, I think it's come back to the more elegant style and it's really a, a fine wine, a really a great wine. So we go to Pouillac next. And Pouillac is the cream of the crop when it comes to all Bordeaux. Uh, that's the high rent district, uh, Pouillac. Uh, you have three first growths there. You have um, Chateau Lafitte Rothschild, if not the most famous wine in the world, one of the most famous wines. You have Mouton Rothschild. And you have Chateau Latour, uh, the majestic Latour, which means tower in French. And you see the big tower right in the middle of the vineyard. And they make very structured wines, Chateau Latour, uh, very high Cabernet uh, percent. 
Wow, Lafitte is more elegant and uh, cedary and um, um, like a Hermes uh, scarf, very luxurious. And Mouton tends to be a powerful wine. And other wines of note for Pilyak, Lynch Baj, always good, rich, big style. And Pichon Lalande, second growth, uh, beautifully elegant, balanced, um, really majestic wines. And understand that the style is very big in Pouillac because of the soil. And, and it has slightly higher elevation than other areas. And there's, there's black currant, plum, uh, cigar box, uh, cedary qualities to these wines. And especially Lafitte has that cedar quality to it. Uh, like a beautiful cedar chest, you open it up and you get the quality of those wines. Next is uh, Saint Julien. Saint Julien is very, very small. It's equal to the size of Pomerol and uh, is one of the most consistent wine growing areas in Bordeaux. Uh, I just did a tasting of the 2019 Bordeaux and to me, uh, those Saint Julien's in 2019 really shone and, and it was very consistent throughout Saint Julien. And I, if you wanna start spending your money on Bordeaux wines, you should visit Saint Julien first because there's so many good producers and the prices are much fairer than uh, other areas like Pouillac. And, and um, the, uh, f the flavors, the, n the northern soil is richer. So you're going to get more full-bodied wines out of there, like Leoville Lascasse. Uh, much uh, richer, it's, it's uh, nearer uh, Pouillac. So you have the richer soil. Uh, but as you go to the south, it gets lighter the soil and the wines become more feminine and more elegant. So Leoval Barton, excellent, excellent chateau. Anthony Barton just passed away recently and uh, this was his trademark uh, chateau that he owned that uh, year after year, you can't find uh, a um, chateau that is consistent and really uh, you can't go wrong with. And then you have Ducru Bocayou owned by the Boree family and uh, excellent second growth, beautifully elegant, uh, very, very age worthy. And then you have Leoval Lascasse. Leoval Lascasse, if there's any wine that might be a first growth, that's a second growth, it would be Leoval Lascasse. And the Delon family uh, really, really has produced great wines in the past. and. Uh, a lot of people felt that they make first growth quality. So then, then we go to Margot. Margot, to me, is the most underachieving area in, in Bordeaux. There are a lot of chateaus that underperform. And at its height, Margot can have an incredible perfume of violets. Uh, if you have a bottle of Chateau Margot from a good vintage, those violets loft out of the glass and are really beautiful. Uh, and they tend to be very, very elegant. Uh, as I said, they have violet overtones uh, and very, very perfume quality. Um, there is gravelly soil and Margot, which really just drains well. So the two wines you really want to look for is Chateau Margot and Chateau Palmer. Those two wines are the wines that that are uh, every year they're they're like at the top. And as I said before, there's a lot of underperforming. Uh, Rosanne Seglar, though, in the last 25 years, has made has made phenomenal wines. Look out for Roseanne Segla in Margot. 
So now we come to Grav. It's called Grav because they have very gravelly soil. And it's to the south of Bordeaux. Now, we're not going to talk about Sauterne and Barsac. Because those are sweet wines, and we should have a separate ep- we should have a certain uh, a separate episode just for those wines. So I'm not going to cover those now, but they are in the left bank uh, south of uh, south of Bordeaux. But Grave, uh, Pessac, Leagon uh, are areas that produce red and white wines, and the wines. The white wines are made of Sauvignon Blanc and Semillon. And the wines have a tendency to be very perfumed. And the more Semillon they have, the more perfumed they are, the more waxy they are. The more Sauvignon Blanc they have, the fresher, more grapefruity they are. And uh, some of the uh, best white wines in the world uh, are White Grave. Uh, All of the... Uh, Le Mission Aubryon makes a white wine. Aubryon makes a white wine. They're very expensive. They're very long-lived. They're very good wines. Uh, I'm very partial to Chateau Carbonneau Blanc. Uh, the last 10 years, they've been making uh, an incredibly uh, uh, fascinating white wine, refreshing, and priced well. Uh, and there's other white wines. You should try them at some time. But as far as the red wines go, and as I said, uh, very, very gravelly, uh, soil and it's earthy stony flavors uh, some people say it tastes like warm bricks um, but uh, high highly highly mineral and um, always always uh, very very different in style than the northern Bordeaux wines uh, in Medoc uh, because of the gravelly soil and as I said Aubryon, which is the first growth in 1855, and I think the rest of the Grav, this was the only one, only Grav that was put in the 1855 classification. Um, and I think in 1953, the rest of the Graves were uh, classified. Uh, and then you have Le Mission Aubryon, which was right across the street from Aubryon. And a lot of similarities. And the owner of Aubryon, uh, 25 years ago, bought La Mission Aubryon. But they are different, and they have different characteristics. So that's the look at the left bank. And uh, these are the heritage wines of Bordeaux. And some of the greatest wines in the world are these left bank wines. Not that the right bank wines are not great also, but... uh, these are the wines that uh, people search out from all over the world. And only 5% of the classified Bordeaux are the total production of Bordeaux. So I hope this has brought you up to snuff on Bordeaux.